The 12 gauge pump action shotgun is notorious as one of the world's most lethal weapons. Its lead pellets disperse from its cartridge at an initial velocity of 365 meters per second. But researchers are uncovering evidence from the ancient world that in an age before gunpowder, even the most simple weapons became lethal in the right hands. A weapon is simply a tool that a human being uses to kill. Students of Wudang Kung Fu in central China still practice the techniques of the 3,000-year-old Chinese waxwood gun, also known as a staff. Its history is shrouded in tales of lightning-fast attacks. The gun's techniques are said to have been perfected by a group of ancient Chinese Buddhist monks who combined meditation with the art of warfare. They became known as the Shaolin after their monastery in the central Chinese province of Henan. In the early 7th century, they became involved in a power struggle over land with a warlord, Wang Shichong. The emperor's infantry were renowned swordsmen. It's recorded that when the two sides clashed in the Battle of Hulao in 621 AD, the monks used their most famous weapon to defeat the emperor's army, the Shaolin Staff. But are the ancient accounts accurate? Can what appears to be a simple wooden stick really be a devastating weapon? Ancient discoveries have set up a test against the modern shotgun. How quickly can each weapon smash five targets? The gun I'm using today is a 12-gauge Mossberg shotgun that is designed to use solid slugs. This weapon is typically used by police forces, mainly in America, for riot control. I could train someone to use this to a competent standard within an hour. Peter will be going up against Nathan, three times world kickboxing champion and Shaolin martial artist. This is the ancient Shaolin staff. It's been used over 3,000 years ago. This takes time to perfect the skill, the accuracy, the power, technique. The shotgun's ammunition is ejected from the barrel by an enormous pressure. The pellets start as one mass, then rapidly disperse out. But how quickly will Peter be able to fire five accurate rounds? In 4.07 seconds, Peter took out all five pots, eight tenths of a second per pot. Now it's Nathan's turn. Staff destroys all five pots in 2.57 seconds, 55 hundredths of a second per pot, and one and a half seconds faster than the shotgun. That's quite a quick shoot for me, but I'm very impressed with Nathan. My time was 4.07 seconds, and Nathan's was 2.57, so which is a fair bit quicker than me. I feel the test proved that uh, the ancient weapon can be used faster. The thing about my weapon is it's years of practice, years of dedication, timing, skill, and technique. So once you master that and your mind works as one with your body, you yourself become a lethal weapon. The gun was designed for lightness and speed. In combat, it was used against swords and spears by blocking and sweeping the enemy. It became known as the father of all weapons, as other weapons were developed from it. But if weapons like the staff and sword were lost on the battlefield, there was another that could be used as backup. It was said to strike as fast as a meteor. It allegedly had the power to split open a head or break the bones of the enemy. According to a text called Records of the Three Kingdoms, it was deployed by soldiers of the Cao Wei Empire. In the 3rd century AD, this empire was competing for control of China. 
The meteor hammer gets its name from the great power in which it strikes its target. Compared to other Shaolin weapons, it has a longer reach and strikes with much more speed and ferocity. The meteor hammer is a bronze or steel ball attached to a three meter rope. In a surprise attack, it gave its owner the tactical advantage of being able to strike from a longer range than close combat weapons. The main techniques of the meteor hammer is to either swing the meteor hammer directly at an opponent or to hook it over a knee, elbow or a foot and let it go after the meteor hammer has picked up momentum. In 228 AD, it's recorded that a Sao Wei warrior severely injured an enemy officer on the battlefield with a meteor hammer assault. By swinging the meteor hammer and letting go at just the right moment, it enables me to build enough power to strike the opponent with enough force to either knock him out or possibly kill. Yet the true speed, power and performance of a meteor hammer strike remains a mystery. Using the latest tools of fight science, researchers are beginning to unravel the truth behind this legendary weapon. With martial arts weapons, which are obviously thousands of years old, it's a bit of a mystery as to how they were developed in the first place. With modern technology, obviously we can do a bit of a detective story and we can now investigate just how much uh, destruction they could actually cause. Dr. Ewan Griffiths uses the latest high-speed photography to analyze sporting performance. Can he, using these tools of modern science, discover how the meteor hammer was optimized and the speed at which it strikes? With this technology, we can look at velocities, accelerations and forces that we were never able to do before. With martial arts, we can estimate the amount of force being developed in punches and kicks, for example. As a comparison to the meteor hammer, Ewan will analyze a punch. We're going to use a Shaolin twisting punch, where we're going to try and relax all the muscles in the body to get as much power through the body as possible. The slow motion allows Ewan to produce a scientific breakdown of Michael's Shaolin twisting punch. From the movement of the bag, I'm going to use inverse dynamics to work out the amount of force in the punch. Inverse dynamics is a mathematical system that tells us which muscle is active and how much force that muscle is exerting. If this punch was aimed at your face, it would be coming towards you at 18 miles an hour. The amount of force in the punch worked out at 188 pounds. The punch strike only lasted for seven hundredths of a second, so it would be over very quickly. But how will the meteor hammer perform in the slow motion analysis? In spite of its reputation, no one has ever explored the weapon in this detail. Now we're ready for the first test, and I'm going to swing the meteor hammer without using any real swinging momentum. The team is attaching a harder surface to the punch bag, as Ewan's calculations rely on seeing the speed at which the hammer retreats after its first impact. Seen in slow motion, a throw can be initiated quickly and efficiently by a skilled fighter. The velocity was 21 miles per hour, and the amount of force was 93 pounds against the wooden target. That lasted for 1.4 hundredths of a second. So bearing in mind that this was a fairly low velocity of release, it's about half what we measured in the punch. The team's final test will attempt to increase the meteor hammer's force. Can Michael achieve even more power by increasing the number of revolutions? When the meteor hammer is being spun round, the tension in the rope is actually called the centrifugal force. And this is the force which is responsible for keeping the object moving in a circular path. Seen in slow motion, Michael is able to achieve four rotations a second. More rotations build up greater stored energy in the rope. On its release, the energy is transferred to the metal hammer. This final test using the centrifugal force has shown that the velocity of the meteor hammer was increased to 31 miles an hour and the amount of force in the impact was 178 pounds. Now, 
This is approximately double what we were measuring with a direct release. The test has shown that the meteor hammer is likely to fracture an unprotected skull. Yet while powerful, it exerts no more force than a Shaolin punch. Its advantage lies in that it's a punch thrown from three meters away and at twice the speed. But does that really make it an ideal weapon for killing on the battlefield? Using modern technology, scientists can even design the optimum meteor hammer. Michael's hammer weighs less than 300 grams. If you had a weight of 22 ounces and a length of 1.4 yards, this would take the weight of the strike up to about 1,200 pounds, which is then approaching half a ton of force. That means a 600 gram hammer would strike with the force of six punches, easily enough to kill. It's conceivable that ancient warriors did use hammers of this size to just that deadly effect. Nearly all martial arts weapons were first seen on the battlefield and designed for large-scale warfare. Ancient Discoveries investigates the legendary weapons said to have severed the limbs and heads of enemies. From ancient Greece, Rome and Egypt to the Middle East and Asia, all ancient civilizations developed the technology to kill. Yet as the battle turned into personal conflict, commanders needed men who could cut down the enemy in a fight to the death. In early China, when they appointed people to lead their troops, they were very often looking for heroes. Men who could lead personally into battle, wielding weapons and cut down the enemy, setting an example to their men. The same weapons wielded by Kung Fu masters were also deployed by ancient military commanders. Weapons that were designed for severing the limbs and heads of enemies. This weapon is known as the Da Dao, the big knife. It was the main arms in wars and battles. It was also the favorite of many ancient generals and warriors. It can be used by both cavalry and soldiers on foot. Between the 10th and 13th centuries, the ruling Chinese dynasty, the Song, was at war with the Jin dynasty. The Song infantry needed a weapon to combat enemy ground troops and attacking cavalry, and that meant something with reach and power. When being swung fast, it could severely wound your enemies. It was recorded that in the Song dynasty, a general chopped off three heads in one go, the head of his opponent, the head of his opponent's horse, and head of the opponent's weapon. This was branded as the three heads at one cleave, which is a very famous story. The key to its success was its sharp and extremely heavy metal head, which could weigh up to 40 kilos. On a Chinese battlefield, you would probably have the smell of ruptured intestines. You'd be slipping on the blood that was spilled on the ground. It will be a complete mess. Leading Shaolin martial artist Ian Armstrong is investigating the areas of the body that ancient warriors would have targeted on the battlefield. This can quite easily sever a head that sort of action. If I bring it across the abdomen, this will more or less instantly open up the abdominal wall, which will mean that all of the intestines fall out. If I use a downward cut, I would come here through the collarbone, pull the weapon out this way. Tom Richardson, curator of the Oriental Gallery at the Royal Armouries in Leeds, has been studying the development of one of the earliest death weapons in the history of warfare. A weapon that, according to ancient Chinese legends from the 4th century, was favoured by General Lu 